Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come with me to the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to John. And uh, I'm going to share with you some bread from heaven. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 6, verse 53, is something that has confused many religious people throughout the centuries. And to those, to that remnant who are, who is of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose ears and eyes are open to hear his word, for the, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, even the Lord hath made both of them, these things are perfectly clear, and I want to share these things with you. And I want to share with you also, before I start, that I want you to have the understanding that if you are not in Jesus Christ, if you're not born of his word, then if these things don't make sense to you, it's probably going to make you a little angry or upset or offended. Uh, I don't say these things to offend any person. I say these things because this is my Father's Word. And so if these things offend you or make you angry, I would counsel you even at this point to seek the Lord Jesus Christ and to ask Him to reveal these things to you, whether or not I'm speaking the truth to you in His name. And if you do that with an honest and good heart, He will reveal these things to you because it's written, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. As I share these things with you, I'm not going to use theology and twist words around and use Hebrew and Greek to tell you that the words of scripture really should mean something else. I'm just going to read the scripture to you and show you from the scripture what the scripture is saying. Okay, This word in this Bible, this is my authorized King James Bible. If you speak English, this is the word of God. These words are not difficult to understand if one will obey the word of God. It's written in James chapter 1 verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves which is a testimony to the fact that those who read this word and refuse to obey this word will never understand this word. That's why all these theologians are so confused these days, and that's why you have all these different denominations, groups of people who have chosen lesser names, because they have chosen different doctrines, because they have chosen to rebel against the Lord at some point and do things their own way instead of His way. And when they do that, they bring deception upon themselves, and they, they choose another doctrine than the doctrine of Christ, they choose another name than the name of Jesus Christ, and they become denominated and devalued, of course, and they become separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. But his word is what it is. And he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's not a hard saying. Believe it like a little child, and just do it, and you'll be blessed. Let's go to John chapter 6, verse 53. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man, excuse me, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Oh my goodness. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise the Lord. Let's go through that again kind of slowly. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Oh my goodness, this verse of Scripture this saying of Jesus Christ is definitely a hard saying. It is just like the people said, it, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Okay. When the multitudes were gathered around Jesus, they weren't gathered around him because of his word, they were gathered around him because of his miracles. They saw the miracles, they ate the bread from heaven, they saw the people healed that were crippled, and they gathered around him, and when they gathered around him in multitudes, then he spoke the word the word that he was and is, the word made flesh. And when he did that, the vast majority of them departed, and they still do today. Um, 
there is a, a, a huge religious cult in this world that believes that this verse of scripture is translated to mean that it must be the mass. It must be that this little wafer and this glass of wine, as our mother church has taught us, is actually transformed by transubstantiation magic into the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ and that we are eating his flesh and drinking his blood. It must be because he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. These deceived masses are among those who said, this isn't a hard saying, who can hear it? Okay. There's not one instance in the scripture where anyone ever tried to take a bite out of the, out of the actual physical body of Jesus Christ or to try to drink any of his blood. Okay. <laughs> so if he is the savior of the world and we have to actually eat his flesh and drink his blood from his physical body in order to have life, then nobody in the world has life because nobody has ever done that. So obviously that can't be what he was saying. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He said it again. He said it again. This hard saying that is so hard to understand, but it's perfectly simple to them that have ears to hear. Listen, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Okay. Let's understand who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is a man, the Son of God. Okay. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5. But Jesus Christ is more than just the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Father, the Almighty God, who sent him. Okay, because the Son of God got his name from somewhere. He got his name by inheritance. He got his name from his Father. And the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. So the Father who sent him is in him. The Father who sent him stood up at the feast and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. A man cannot say, If you're thirsty, drink me. A man is not water. A man is not living water. But the Almighty God, who is a spirit, is the living fountain of waters. The Almighty God, who is a spirit, is spirit and life. His word comes forth from him. The word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were created by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Praise the Lord. In God is life by his word. Okay, His word is not a person apart from him. His word is him. It's God, the Father. It is a spirit. God is a spirit. Hallelujah. So God, the Almighty God, standing on the earth in his Son, Jesus Christ, said, For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. It wasn't the Son of God who was speaking these things of his flesh. It was God, the Father, who was speaking these things of his flesh. Hallelujah. May God open the eyes of your understanding to see these things. And then let's read on. Verse 57. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Okay? As the living Father hath sent me, God sent his Son into the world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father. Okay, how did the Son of God live by the Father? How did he have life? Because he kept the Father's commandments, and he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of his Father. Okay, this happened at his baptism. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, and went about healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, saith the Scripture. So as the Son of God lived by his Father, obtained life by his Father, so he that eateth me, he says, even he shall live by me. So we can obtain life through the Son of God in the same way that the Son of God obtained that life from his Father. How? By keeping his commandments and being anointed with his Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 58, this is that bread which came down from heaven. This, 
this he's saying of himself this me I am that living bread that came down from heaven not as your fathers ate manna in the desert and are dead Okay, listen to me, people of Israel. Your fathers ate that, that bread that came down from heaven. They're dead. They're not alive anymore. They're dead. They're in the grave. But whoso eateth of this bread, Jesus pointed to himself, whoso eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Well, guess what? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And most of these people were not born again. Just like most people in the churches today are not born again. They think that they've been born again because they said a prayer and their lying pastors told them because they said that prayer they're born again. That's a lie. The seed is the word of God. And if you're born again, you're born of this word. And if you're born of this word, this word is in you. And God has given you revelation and you can see his kingdom. And you desire the things that are right and good and you despise the things that are evil. And you don't have to have a pastor giving you rules of what to do and what not to do. You have sanctification from the inside. And you're part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not a denominated church called by a lesser name. But the church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the highest name. Because you have his word in you. And it causes you to come into the fullness of the truth. Because the, the, Jesus said that when the spirit of truth has come, he will lead you into all truth. Praise the Lord. Well, in this case, many, of, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Doth this offend you? And the word offend in the English language doesn't always mean something that is said to you to hurt your feelings. That's, how, that's pretty much the only definition of offend that people know anymore is when something, like if I say, Well, your mother's so fat when she sits around the house... Okay, that offends you okay but and that is a true definition of the word offense but another definition of the word offense is when something causes you to stumble and fall okay when you're walking down the street and um, you're looking up instead of down and there's a kink in the sidewalk and you hit it with your foot and you fall you have offended you have fallen down okay and that's what Jesus meant when he said does this offend you does this cause you to stumble does this cause you to, to end your journey so quickly? Does this cause you to fall out of the way and stop following me? Does this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Uh-oh. This is like John 3.13. People stumble at this. People are offended at this. What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? How could the Son of Man have been somewhere before? Okay. There is no triune God. There is no Trinity, there is no God the Son, there is no God the Holy Spirit, there is only one God, the Father. And He has a Son, He begat a Son, hallelujah, and called Him by His name. And that Son was begotten in the womb of a virgin about 2,000 years ago, and before that He didn't exist, substantially. But how is it that He could have been before He was? Well, Re Revelation 13.8 says that the Son of God, the Lamb of God, was crucified, slain before the foundation of the world. How could the Lamb of God have been slain before the foundation of the world? But yet witnesses saw it come to pass about 2,000 years ago right outside of Jerusalem. Because it was done before it started. See, God calls those things which be not as though they were. So it doesn't have to have occurred already for it to be reality in the kingdom of God. All that it takes for it to be reality in the kingdom of God is that God hath spoken it from the beginning. So before the Lamb of God was ever slain on the cross on Calvary 2,000 years ago, it was done before the foundation of the world. And that's how David could speak about it a thousand years beforehand in the 22nd Psalm and many other places. First Peter chapter 1, verse 20 tells us that the Lamb of God was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Okay, So he said in John 17, 5, he spoke of the glory which he had with the Father before the world was. It doesn't mean that the Son of God was standing there with the Father before the world was and, and they two created the heavens and the earth together. No. It means that he was foreordained before the foundation of the world. He was known of the Father just like you and I were before the foundation of the world. And he had glory with the Father before the foundation of the world. And that's why God said, let us make man in our image. He was talking to his son, but his son wasn't there with him at the time. His son was going to be born 4,000 years later. But before the foundation of the world... He was foreordained, and he was part of the plan, and it was all built around him. All things were made by him and for him, and without him, nothing is made that was made. Who's him? God. 
the Almighty God. When the scripture says, without him nothing is made that was made, there's only one person that could be talking about, and that is God. Because God, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Isaiah 44, 24 says that he created all things by himself. God did not have a helper or a mediator when he created all things. He did it by himself, period. There was no one there with him. Okay? But there is one that was known of him and had glory with him before the foundation of the world. And God had always a body because he had spoken it from the beginning. But his body did not come into being until the fullness of the time had come. Galatians 4, 4. Made of a woman, made under the law. If you're born of God, you can understand that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? That's how it could be. How could the Son of God be in heaven and on the earth at the same time? John 3.13 John 6.62 Because he is the one which is and which was and which is to come. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He can be in your house and my house at the same time. He came to his disciples after his resurrection and entered the room without using the door. And at the same time, he could have been in another house on another part of the planet, in his body, speaking to some other people at the same time. How could that be? Before his body was ever formed in the womb, he appeared to Joshua in the fifth chapter of Joshua as the captain of the Lord of hosts. He appeared to Abraham in the 18th chapter of Genesis with two angels. He appeared to Manoah. How could this be? Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Therein lies the answer. Praise the Lord. So, he goes on to say in verse 63, and remember he's talking to some of his disciples and he has already said, does this offend you? The ones that remained, the ones that didn't walk away. He said, does this offend you? What if he shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Now here he's giving the answer to his to the few who remained with him, which is what he always does. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Jesus is saying, take your eyes off this flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. This flesh, because of the curse of Adam, is going to go back to the dust. It's dung. It's filth. If you don't wash it every 12 hours or so, it stinks. It's dying. It was dying from the moment it was conceived in the womb. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh is vile. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, listen to me. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. In him was life. Who's him? God. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. What is God? Is God a man? No. He's not a man. God is a spirit. John 4.24 God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Numbers 23 something rather. 23.19 I think. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man. God is a spirit. And he was manifest in the flesh, and he stood on the earth in a human body, and he said, The words that I speak unto you are spirit, and they are life. The Almighty God, who is a spirit, stood up on the last day of the feast and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. It wasn't the Son of God speaking of his own physical body. It was God the Father standing there in, in, a, in a human body, speaking of himself, saying, I am the fountain of everlasting life. I am the fountain of living waters. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. In the same way, he was standing here in this human body that, that is called the Son of God, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Okay. The Son of Man the Word made flesh. What is the Word of God? It is God. It's not another person of a trinity. There is no trinity. The Word is not the second person of the Godhead. There is no second person. The Godhead is God the Father. And the Word 
is God, God the Father. And the Word was from the beginning. And before anything was ever created, the Word was finished. God has not been figuring it out as He goes along. It was done from the beginning. And the only thing that had to, to take place after that was the unfolding of the things that God had already decreed in the process of time. And that's where we are in time. And so we're watching the unfolding of these things. But before anything ever was, it was already done. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. You and I were known of God before the foundation of the world. But you and I didn't begin to exist until we were formed in our mother's wombs. We weren't with God in the beginning. But those of us who are in Christ Jesus and who will persevere unto the end, we had glory with the Father in the beginning, before the foundation of the world. Oh yes, we did. Because we are predestined according to the according to the to, to the desire of him who hath chosen us in his own son Jesus Christ. Before the foundation of the world. But this for this this flesh and this blood is the word. What we have just done, what you and I have just done in the privacy of your own living room or wherever you are where you're watching me, is what Jesus said that one must do inherit, to inherit eternal life. It has nothing to do with eating a wafer or drinking a glass of wine. It has nothing to do with trying to find the actual physical body of Messiah and taking a bite out of it. It has to do with partaking of this bread of life. And when you're partaking of this bread of life, when you're abiding in the Word of God, when you're reading His Word and doing what it says, then you're eating the flesh of the Son of Man and drinking His blood. The Word. The Word of the living God. That's what it's all about. Religious people all over the world can't understand that. It is a stumbling block to many. To the Greeks, foolishness. And to the Jews, a stumbling block, as the Scripture says. But to them which are saved, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And to them which are saved, to them which are born of the word of God, this is perfectly simple. When you're reading the word of God, and you have your heart set to obey it, then you're having fellowship with the Lord. You're sitting at his feet, hearing his word, and obeying his word, and you're eating his flesh and drinking his blood. You're eating the true bread that came down from heaven, that will give you life. Not like the old manna that came from heaven in the old times and, and, and our fathers ate of it and are dead now. But if we eat of this bread, we shall never taste of death. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this message be a blessing to those of you who have ears to hear. And uh, if anybody has questions, earnest questions, by that I mean I'm not going to entertain foolishness or have circular conversations with religious people or theologians, but... If you have an earnest question whereby you desire to know the truth, I'm here for you. You're welcome to write to me. My name is Clinton. Peace.